past all those city lights and skyscrapers, there's one heck of a gem of a waterfowl hunting location, and that's Long Island. They uh, work the tides here, so low tide right now, water should be coming back in. Here I'm going to try and get out and find water. Kill some birds. <laughs> claim New Jersey is the largest, but uh, I don't think that New Jersey is the largest. I think that um, Long Island, New York holds the largest uh, population of brand. Guy's gone 15 years without shooting a band and, and thought that that curse was going to follow him for the rest of his life and being able to do it on a, on a, a Brant hunt was, was great. I didn't know what to expect going into a Brant hunt out in New York. Um, Glenn Geick, a very good friend of mine we met a few years ago, uh, invited us to come out there and do some Brant hunting and it's something we had never done before. Um, it looked really cool. It's been a, a, a bird that's been on my list that I've, I've wanted to kill and I've wanted to uh, experience that kind of hunt for a very long time. So to take that opportunity to go out there is something that uh, we jumped on and. Uh, Blake and I headed out there to meet my brother Woody and hopefully we were going to have a, a, a great couple of days trying to kill a few brand. Our brant hunts took place in a tidal marsh, which was just inside the ocean. So not only do we see a ton of brant, but with the water and the marsh and vegetation everywhere, there's a ton of ducks around too. Brant hunting compared to Canada hunting, um, aside from the fact that they, they're a goose and they, they kind of look like that when they're flying, it pretty much stops right there. When these Brant come in and they, they come in and take one look at you and they go out and make a loop and the second time they come at you, they want to come right in. There's no calling to it, there's no real science to it other than being in the right place at the right time and using that tide to your advantage to find that right place. Glenn Geck from Knock em Down Guide Service. We provide brand hunting and sea duck hunting at its finest. Brand eat kelp and seaweed and various things from the bottom, snails, things like that. We like to hunt our brand on the fall of the tide, get the boats up against the bank as far as we can, um, set out as many decoys as we possibly can, you know, usually from anywhere from 50 to 100 birds. right off the bat that first morning, Nate, one of the guys hunting with us, it's Glenn's friend, 
He scored on a double banded Brant, and that was one of more to come. Now there are two types of brant. There's a Pacific brant, which is also called a black brant, which is obviously on the west coast. But what we're hunting this week are the Atlantic brant. They're not quite as dark as the Pacific birds. Now Glenn and his clients shoot a lot of bands. Uh, I think all of them have come from Nunavut, Canada, which is about 2,000 miles away. The area around Long Island is a major wintering ground for them. You see them on soccer fields, baseball fields, hanging out at the beach. There's a ton of them around. Typically they just eat aquatic food, but more recently they've started eating cereal grains and grasses, and some biologists think this is because the population is reaching the carrying capacity of the environment they winter in. You see a white patch, or it's also sometimes called a necklace on some of them, this signifies maturity. Uh, the white patch means a bird has reached maturity. I think the bigger it is, the wider it is, the more mature the bird is. They'll also tend to take on a little darker appearance. I know it's not very often that we hunt the same location two days in a row, but with the number of brand around and the tide being very similar to what it was the day before, you know, it's bottoming out that morning, uh, Glenn was confident that we'd have another good hunt, so we went right back into that same location for day two. They claim New Jersey is the largest, but uh, I don't think that New Jersey is the largest. I think that um, Long Island, New York holds the largest population of brand. Best time, we, we usually open um, in November for four or five days, and then uh, we open again um, in December, usually on a 31st. Uh, well, this year at least was on a 31st, and then we have a 30-day uh, season as of right now. We had numerous times where we'd shoot a bird or two and just a couple seconds later out of the middle of nowhere here comes another brant dive bomb in the spread. Uh, it's a very fast paced hunt, you have to stay ready, but you also have to be mindful that since it's only a two bird limit, you've got to pick your shot. You know, living 14 hours apart from my brother and only getting to see him a few times a year, every time we have the chance to, to get together and hunt together, um, it's, it's always going to be a good time. And, and getting him up there to go brant hunting with us was uh, something that uh, is going to be uh, a memory to me for the rest of my life. Uh, and, and also getting to watch him, him shoot his first band was, uh, was great. Um, Guy's gone 15 years without shooting a band and, and thought that that curse was going to follow him for the rest of his life and being able to do it on a, on a uh, Brant hunt was, was great. Brant are a tough bird. They've got thick down just like a Canada goose does, despite their smaller size. You can knock one out of the air, it hits the water, you gotta be ready for a follow-up shot or two. 
We also had a couple flocks where we'd shoot one or two birds out of it, they'd go out in front of us, they'd circle, they'd come right back in. Uh, Brant don't seem to learn from past experiences like ducks and honkers do, so shooting into a bigger flock is not as big of a deal as it is with mallards or, or geese. You know, we had birds land in the spread, uh, we were waiting on the group that was behind them, we'd shoot into the group behind them and those one or two birds that were sitting in the decoys would still be sitting there after the guns went off. Glenn and Danny that run Knock em Down Guide Service out there in Long Island. It's a, it's a first class operation. The equipment that these guys use is by far some of the safest equipment I've ever seen. The boats that they use um, and, and what these guys put into making sure that you have a good hunt and what they put into making sure you have a safe hunt when you're hunting uh, big water in the ocean like that is incredible to me. They, they put a lot of time and effort into it. They've spent a lot of money to make sure that their clients and us are, you know, their friends that um, we have a memorable experience out there and have a good hunt. Well, we had a couple times where a bird or two would land in the decoys and we'd shoot the two or three that were behind them, only to have the initial birds that landed to still be sitting there waiting for uh, who knows what. And I can't regurgitate what I'm trying to talk. Where do they spend their summers? Um, up in the Nunavut, Canada area. I, I hope I'm pronouncing it properly. And how do you know that? Um, because our banded birds come from that Nunavut area. And the banded birds are pretty prevalent, aren't they? Yes, they are. Yes, we shot, uh, what did we shoot this weekend? Three, four? Three. Three, three banded brant this weekend. It's phenomenal. If I, had, if I had to use one word to describe a brant, the word smart would not come to mind. There's an Atlantic brant, which is also called the black brant. But what we're hunting this week are the Atlantic Pacific. Atlantic Pacific, west, east, mixed up. 